Um, so I uh, am here to talk about creatives killing collaboration, which is a little bit controversial because I am, in fact, a creative technically in that department. I am, as mentioned, was was a executive creative director at Crispin for many years, and most recently um, at a place called Co Collective, a startup that I'm a partner in in New York. And um, and we don't have a creative department. Um, I'm known as the chief content officer. And, um, and we work in, in a different group where we have pods, um, not an art director and a writer, so it's a very different structure. And we decided not to have a creative um, department because we were all creative and worked together. Um, so that's really what this is, is about. Um, I think, I mean, I agree with this, and this is something that um, Ray Animato, chief creative officer of AKQA said, which is creativity no longer belongs to those who have the word creative in their title. Essentially, um, and we've been hearing a lot about innovation and technology and different things, it's really, it is leveling the playing field. We saw the, the panel of people from YouTube today who are all creative and doing things on their own and, and not at agencies and not in the traditional roles of, of a creative. And so things are just really different. I mean, you know, people that aren't in our industry are being even more creative um, than we are. And everyone has access to creative tools. Um, and, and what inspired me to write and talk about this is uh, there are a lot of technologists and uh, digital strategists that are coming into advertising and they're excited because they want to contribute and help the process and help us do I think more of what um, Colleen was getting at which is how do we get emotion, emotion and how do we make technology um, better and how do we get that creativity into those ideas and I, and I don't think it's necessarily that innovation isn't creative, I think it's just the way we have to work together to get that so, so that we don't drive separation between really the creative process and, and the technology. Um, a friend of mine, and you know, this is just them, a lot of them are leaving. So this is a friend of mine who I interviewed um, and now has become a friend, but she went into advertising, um, was really excited to be at the core of where the ideas were happening versus at a technology shop. And, um, and she went there expecting to be in like the most creative, amazing environment that she'd ever been in. And she actually found that um, it wasn't that at all. And that worried me because I'm a creative person that, that loves technology and wants to do great things with it and, and need their help to, to make the ideas that I come up with happen and, and to actually um, bring them to life. So she wrote this blog and she put it out there and it, got a, it was very emotional. A lot of people wrote back. People did believe that there isn't this sense of really collaboration around creativity in agencies right now. And, um, and what she found really is that there's an artificial distinction between creative and strategy and technology. Um, so, so the creative department, no matter what she would find, if she had a great idea, if, if she brought it out there, it would never matter. Like the creative department was the one that got to say what was the creative idea. And, and she really felt like she wasn't able to contribute her creative ideas because of that. She also felt there was a lot of lip service to collaboration. Um, so everyone likes the idea of collaboration, but, but it's really hard to do, to do collaboration unless you really set the ground rules and make everyone feel like they're a participant. Um, she found that the art director copywriter model you know, wasn't well suited to four dimensional ideas. When some of the things we're making now, um, even some of the things that we just saw in the last presentation, and I have a couple of examples, uh, they, they take a lot more people. They're no longer um, an art director and a copywriter going to a coffee shop, coming up with an ad, and being able to really essentially do it themselves. I mean, every idea and great idea that I've been most proud of recently has, has, has become you know, the effort of, of multiple people throughout the whole stage of the process to make that thing happen. She also found there was a lot of fear um, I, it's funny because when I first started at Crispin, like over 10 years ago now, I'd come from um, a digital background. So I was a little bit of a different sort of creative. I started in um, startups and was a programmer um, and in, went into advertising because there was no option for me in school to do digital yet. And, um, and I was really excited about the idea of digital uh, at Crispin when we started it a long time ago. But a lot of people didn't want to do it and a lot of directors didn't want to do it. Um, so I got to kind of make these projects that no one paid attention to and, and did and, made, and won awards for great work because there wasn't a lot of you know, people caring about what it was. It was really the bastard stepchild project. You know, the TV was the thing that got the, um, the, all, the, all the attention. And, and what she found now is that because more digital is getting more, more awards and, and people are you know, all wanting to be a part of those projects, there's a lot of fear and land grabbing um, that's happening in agencies. And so even more now that it is 
rising up. You know, everyone is afraid of collaboration even more because they want the credit for it. Um, so that she found that that was happening a lot. But what ultimately she found, and, and I agree with this, is the idea of a creative de department that doesn't include a lot of people that are part of the creative ideas really shuts down collaboration from the start. Um, of course I love being called the creative and being the special being supposedly that is the one that comes with the ideas, but it's just not true anymore. Like it isn't just us doing them. Every project, like I mentioned, I've been a part of has been so many different people and everyone's creative and, and a lot of the ideas are coming from people that aren't technically creatives. So, so I think just even that artificial sort of distinction is, is, is hurting, um, is a hurting advertising. And, and I think what we have to do, um, in agencies is really build a place where collaboration and inspiration can happen from all the different groups, from you know technologists, but also the the, you know, the account people, which we call um, collaborators. Where I work at Co, um, everyone is part of making those ideas happen. They're harder and harder to sell, harder and harder to get made. Um, more people have to be involved. The clients are also part of that collaboration and part of the creative process, um, and that's just where we're headed. And and the more we sort of separate out whose idea it is and say, it, you know, it's mine, um, the less great ideas are going to happen and the less great ideas you guys are going to be able to make. Um, as I mentioned, yeah, there's, there's no longer the need for this kind of two-team structure, two-person structured team. The process before was something pretty simple, like I mentioned. It, it, you know, it's a brief, big idea. You write a headline. You can essentially get it out the door yourself. I find now every process I'm a part of is, is crazy. It's not just a brief anymore. It's like, what is our business problem? Um, you're, you're maybe starting a stem of an idea, but potentially that starts with this amazing strategy that really is the core of the idea. Um, it's going around in circles then between the creative, the technologist, um, other people helping you sell it, clients getting involved, bringing in outside people, maybe even multiple agencies working on projects now. Um, and I mentioned this later, but some of the greatest work now, like a you know, fuel band, whose idea is that? I mean, it's everyone's idea that worked on it in multiple companies. Um, so it, it just can't be separated out into that. Um, Best Buy came to Crispin and they wanted to promote a movie and they wanted to do it in a different way. Um, and I don't even ex exactly remember you know, where the stem of the idea came from, but there was a team. Um, they included uh, technology in the process early on because they knew they wanted to do some sort of ex experience to enhance the movie and make people connect with the movie in a different way. Um, so the idea they came up with was that they would interpret these little characters gibberish and, and let people um, know what they were saying through the movie credits. Um, of course, you know, phones in theaters is is a crazy sort of premise. Um, and also they didn't know how this could possibly happen. So, you know, if you're not on the same team with your, your technology people at that point, if they're not part of the process, the idea dies right there because you can have these amazing ideas in your head and if you can't figure out how to do them and you don't have someone that believes in them with you, they're not gonna happen. So uh, the technologist then said, you know, this actually can happen if we can interpret, if we can hide some like bleeps in the middle of this language. Um, but the, and they were like, oh cool, we can do this then. And they're like, well actually, every phone's different. So we'll have to come up with our own language of bleeps. So then um, they actually, the technologist then went away, um, worked on something of a prototype, got to come back, work with the creative team and say, here's an example of, of this. They literally brought it to life in a prototype in a, you know, in a matter of days. Um, but what they said, oh, here's the problem. This is only gonna happen if the movie creators put it into the movie. And that's, you know, that's a whole other thing. So now they have to get the entire movie team um, on board with this idea. So then they bring in their um, account service person, you know, whoever was um, in charge of the relationship at the time, to help convince the client to then c show up at the uh, movie studio and get the creators of the movie there and play for them this prototype so they can try to get this idea made. So, you know, along the way you have people being very creative, whether it's being creative on how to sell it, being creative on how to create it, or, or the stem of the idea. It's a, l a lot of creativity in that process. Um, they finally showed it to the creators. They said, we're gonna do this. We're gonna change, essentially, the movie, which is a big deal, um, to make this happen for you. Got all that way, they get to the movie theaters, um, and then the, the theaters kill it because they say, we don't want phones in our movies. So then they go, oh shit, <laughs> now what? So they come back, 
technologists, help us, please. You know, do you have any creative ideas on how we can fix this? And they said, actually, we can silence, make sure that our app silences it during the whole movie and only works during the credits. So they came up with a creative idea to help solve, to save this creative idea that stemmed from potentially an art director and a writer. Um, so that, to me, is just an example from the start. And all of those people, by the way, um, are now, it's a, it's a technology that they all um, got patented and they have their names on it. So they actually developed a new technology that can be applied um, and sold to other, to other services. So this is something that, to me, is an example of how, how the kind of ideas we're doing now are about this entire creative team sort of working together. And the creatives are not just the creative department anymore. It's really hard to define who the creative person is in that process when you, when you do those types of projects. Um, you know, I find we, we talk a lot about collaboration. I think the idea is that it, it doesn't matter anymore like where it originates because as, as we see in so many of the ideas, it is about how it gets expressed, how it gets made, how it gets sold. Um, so it's really moving from the idea of origination and that's not really what's important. It's like how do we all work together to make this thing happen? And, and even with clients, besides just teams and agencies, it's about collaborating with your clients, too. I'm, it used to be the way that, that advertising worked is we would get a brief and we would go away and, and not show the client anything. And then at the very end, we would, you know, voila, reveal this amazing presentation and they could clap for us and think we we're amazing. And it was a secret and a mystery of how things happen. But now it's about involving them in the process the whole way. You know, how do we get them to help us make this thing happen and engage them and see it along the way and, and reveal stuff, reveal the back of the kitchen as you're working on it because the ideas can get better when you, when you involve them. And there are more, I think, models that are starting to apply to this. Um, I'm, we're doing it where I work, but, but we're starting to see, I think, people starting to do this. But it's not happening as much as it could. I'm shocked still at how really traditional um, a lot of agencies still are and, and how they get work done and how siloed um, things things happen that are out there. Um, there are some schools that are trying to do it, like Hyper Island and things like that, where it is about this sort of group setting and collaboration. And it doesn't mean that like every single person has to be there for every single meeting and everyone has equal say. I think it's involving the right people at the right time. And so what I want to just talk about a little bit is what, what can we do you know, as people in this industry that want to make it better and, and want to do great work. and. And yes, ultimately win awards, but that's, you'll see that's not what I think it's about ultimately. I think it's about rethinking um, what the exclusive department is. It's not about being called a creative and, and having that distinction. It's about being creative and, and finding the best way for, for people to be creative together, whether that's renaming the department. In some cases, that's what needs to happen. Um, when technologists came into advertising, they actually created the title um, creative technologist just for people to actually admit that they were creative people, and that's something that we needed. So sometimes we need that little kick in the butt um, to make those things happen. Um, I also think it's, it's about stop worrying about awards. I think part of what creates the distinction is the way that uh, awards are structured right now. It's about who gets the credit and having fewer slashes. And, and more and more work isn't about that. It's about um, really re rewarding the work and the client for doing that work. And because and th there are so many people, you can't really draw it back to who um, are the ones that did it. And if you focus really now on, on what the business problems are for clients, the awards come, you know, whether that's because they're more successful or it ends up being a real award. But I think that's really um, where the focus is now. So yeah, it's about awarding the, the work, not the people, not individual awards. Fuel ban um, is an interesting one. I just judged uh, the next awards for AICP, which some of you might know. It's not, I don't think it's international. And um, and everyone was talking about how you know it was the best of the show. It was so different, but everyone was talking about it being this amazing collaboration. How there was an, almost a blurred line between what product, what was product, and what was marketing, and and there were so many agencies that were a part of it. But it but it was entered by RGA, and you know I love RGA. They're super talented, but it wasn't just them that made this idea happen. So we we argued for many hours as to if the, if it should get the award and it should be awarded to RGA. We all agreed that the work was great and the work was like really above and beyond what other people were doing. But what we didn't agree on is who should get the award and how we should award it. So we decided to um, change it and award it to Nike and to all the agencies, um, even though it wasn't entered that way. Um, and we created a new video, we had them create a new video that featured every single agency that worked on it and Nike themselves accepted it. 
And it and to me that's a, an example of the kinds of things that are going to start happening at all award shows as well. You know, the, let's all work together just to make amazing stuff and be part of something great versus worrying about it just being ours. This is just a quote from uh, Harry S. Truman. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit. Um, and another thing is collaborating promiscuously. I love saying that. Amazing things happen when you just, like, I, in the way that I work now at Co is, um, is I work in a team with a technologist, um, a community person, a business strategist, and a brand strategist. And at the center, we have um, a cross between a producer and a project manager and an account person who helps us collaborate easier and tells the right people to be at the right places. Um, and it's an amazing thing because I, I learn so much and through that process and, and they act and everyone can contribute. I can con contribute to the strategy because my point of view on and how the creative idea might come to life is really important. Um, and, and even if you are in an agency now, bring people in that you wouldn't have expected to bring in to, to help you solve a problem. Having those different perspectives and now more than ever, we have so many different awesome people at agencies that are in different departments and we still sit, stay often in different departments. So when you're trying to solve a problem, figure out who is there that you can work with. So just start to do it yourself, even if it's not really um, set up as, as the structure of where you are. It's really about now, not about what you can do, but really your skills to the power of those other people's skills. You will look better, you will get better, your work will be better, you'll win more awards ultimately if it is about working with people that can bring something that you can't. And ultimately, um, I think it's about just, you know, whether it's changing titles or not, I think it's about creating a model and a place where all these people that have great ideas and can add something to it can come together and, and ultimately build bigger, greater, better things. Mm -hmm.